Alright, so welcome back to the channel. This is an updated video on how I do my thumbnails. So I made one about two, three, maybe even four months ago, which is pretty outdated considering I changed my thumbnail style. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I make my thumbnails specifically. Anyways, enjoy the video. Alright, so once I re finish recording my video, usually I would get it and then do this, open it up, and then I would find like a good position for a thumbnail. Now my old style for thumbnails were using replay mod and stuff and not using anything from a screenshot, but recently I've changed it. So if you want to check out like a more professional looking, unless like gaming quote unquote looking i'll leave my old thumbnail tutorial in the description for you to watch all right so usually i would find something like a combo clip or something or right, maybe over here i think um was a combo clip yep all right there we go we got a combo you know let's backtrack that a bit yeah all right there we go to me that's i i think i can take a screenshot so now I open up snipping tool and um, please don't close on me again. I click on new and then I take a screenshot, copy, and then now I open up paint.net. And then usually it's gonna be like this, but what I do is I just, you know, create 19 times by 1080 and then paste it. And also, by the way, I will link paint.net in the description as well as a video with all of the plugins that I use. I use Finley's plugins, so yeah. So once you got this over here, usually what I would do is I would rotate it a bit, like just a bit, not too much. Like this is way too much. That won't look good. But usually I would rotate it a bit, you know, zoom in and stuff. And the way you zoom in is you have to hold control and shift so that it keeps you know the ratio because if you don't it's it's just gonna stretch it and it's not gonna look good so you want to press control and shift on your keyboard if you're gonna want to expand it and not like make it look weird yeah all right that's a good enough tilt so now i'm just gonna zoom in a bit more so that the character is focused um that yep all right all right, there you go. So now we got the base for the thumbnail. So now what you're gonna wanna do is press Control A and then Control C so that you copy this and then open a new file, make sure 1910 by 1080 and paste this. So now this is the tedious part. Now, if you're used to paint.net and using line tool, this will be very easy for you. So usually I'll make it white and red if I wanna outline something. Like if the character has a black skin, then I would outline it with white. But if they have something white on their skin that I have to outline, I would outline it in red so that it doesn't capture the outline, if that makes any sense. So usually I would go up here and change it to five. And then what I would do is I would outline the name tag as well as the character. So usually I would zoom in a good amount so that I can do this really fast. So I'm most probably going to fast forward this part because this might take like a minute or so. But if you zoom in more, this is a tip by the way. If you zoom in more, you're going to complete this faster. And also you want to make sure you cover everything and not miss like and not leave holes because if you leave holes, it's going to capture the sky as well, which we don't want. By the way, I'm gonna be teaching this on how I do it, not like, not lots of tips and tricks and stuff. This is gonna be just how I do my thumbnails. So, yeah. Like, this isn't a paint.net masterclass or anything. Like, I'm just teaching you how I make my thumbnail specifically. And by the way, this thumbnail is for a future video that I'm gonna be making. And also, I'm planning to do a how to win Sky Wars or tips and tricks in Sky Wars and stuff for a video. Because, like, so many people are asking me, hey, Moxie, how do you become better in Sky Wars? So, yeah, I'm planning on doing that pretty soon. Because, like, every time I make it, I just don't like the outcome. Now, by the way, if you have, like, curved things, like, over here, over here, like, I would just take one of the points and curve it a bit, as it'll be way easier that way. Now, of course, you don't have to be this precise, but if you want to, you can. Now, this may take a bit of time, like, when you're first doing it, but the more you get used to it, the faster you're gonna be able to do it. 
Alright, so now I have outlined our characters. So what we're gonna do now, so now we're gonna click magic wand, which is this icon on the left. And by the way, if you don't have this, if you don't have the toolbar, the color palette, or the layers, just click these three on the top right so that you can have it open. So now once you got magic wand selected, you're gonna wanna left click on the character. It should select most of the character, and if it did not, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna click control and left click on the part that you wanna select as well. But if you don't do this, it's gonna select the new part and think you wanna select something new. But no, what we wanna do is we also wanna add this to the selection, so that's why you press control, so that it doesn't get rid of the previous selection. So now that's what you do for the rest of the parts and stuff, and that should be it, right? So once you got that done, you press control C, and then you go back to the base which is your thumbnail and then you add a new layer over here so once you add a new layer press ctrl v and you're good with that step so usually the next thing i would do is do the background which usually has like a blur i color graded a bit and stuff so what i would do is do ctrl a click on background and then go to effects go to blurs and then some people might want motion blur or just like an average blur or something but for my thumbnails i use radial blur which makes it look like that and then i'll take this little crosshair over here and then move it over to the player so that it focuses on the player now this looks all right already but i want to make the background stand out a little bit more so what i'll do is go to effects go into photo and then go into glow now this is way too bright so i'll just adjust the settings a bit and boom now it looks way better and more vibrant all right usually once i'm done with that i would go on to layer 2 which is the character as you can see on the top right press ctrl a and then i'll go to effects object then outline object so usually i do two things outline object then drop shadow sometimes i would do just drop shadow but usually uh, you would want to do outline and then drop shadow so the first thing you're going to want to do is click on outline object usually i would make it white sometimes black it depends on the character like it depends on what you want if you want it to be bright or dark so usually i would select outline radius and then on number two highlight it and change it to 10 and then you're done with outline object so what you're gonna want to do this time is go to effects object drop shadow and now sometimes you might want it black or something but maybe for this one i want something like a yellow glow or what do i go with purple this time i think i'll go with something like gold or something so usually i would go with a bright color usually not green because it's really hard to see green um sometimes red yellowish gold or purple is what i select so i think what i'm gonna do for this one is i think i'm going to do a goldish color so you want this to look like the white is glowing even though it really isn't so what i'm doing here is i'm adjusting the widening radius as well as the blur radius what this does is it adds like a glowing effect to the outline so that stands out more so usually i would play around with it not make it too thick and stuff and once you're done and satisfied click ok and boom you got an outline so the next thing i would do is create a new layer go to text tool and then go up here and then usually you won't have the minecraft your font on your device already so if you need to i will link this it's called the font.com and usually there's minecraftia over here as you can see it's over here all you need to do is do download open it and then install it simple as that so once you got that installed go up here click on m because if you click on the letter it's gonna sort it to that letter so since minecraftia is letter m uh, see it's right over here i now had the minecraft font now 12 is way too small usually i'll make it something like 180 so for this one i'm gonna put name because this is like where my name came from so as you can see this is the minecraft font but this is very hard to see so what i will usually do is Control a effects object drop shadow and then change it to black but before i do this so usually i would do rectangle select which is on top left highlight like the bottom portion and then Control shift u 
so that it does that and then you can just lower the lightness and stuff so once you have that go to magic tool again select these and once you have that selected make sure over on your color palette both of your colors are white and gray so once you have that selected i will click gradient tool which is over here and then usually i would aim it somewhere this high because i don't want it to be too dark so that that's fine with me and then now click magic wand again and then click on the upper text now as you can see we have a problem here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use rectangle select to select that and then also select this so that it doesn't take any of the bottom part and make sure again you have to be pressing control so that it keeps your selections and by the way if you do make a mistake you can always do control z or go back to your previous thing So once you have that selected, I would switch this around, click gradient tool, and then do something like this. And doing this makes it look silverish white, which stands out like a lot. Now you got that. So the next thing I would do, control A, effects, object, and drop shadow. And then add a black drop shadow, and then, you know, maybe make it a bit bigger if the size isn't good. And then maybe like tilt it a bit and there we go sometimes what i'll do is i'll add this effect so that it stands out a bit more like only sometimes if it actually fits it i would do it not all the time though like for this one it actually fits so I i'll keep it and uh, yeah that's usually how i make my thumbnails and stuff and uh, yeah it's pretty simple like my old thumbnails used to be way harder but um the more you get used to paint.net the faster you'll be able to add these thumbnails and stuff so uh, yeah this is pretty much how i edit my thumbnails if you have any more questions leave it in the description or if you want you can dm me on discord my discord's in the description as well as my discord server anyways that's pretty much how i do my thumbnails and stuff and uh yeah see ya